Volvo has always been ahead of car design. They built the first fully electric car 50 years ago. Since creating the 360 self-driving car, Volvo discovered the lack of trust a rider might have while on a journey. To help solve this issue, they focused on sound design inside and outside the car. I am Fredrik Hagman and I work at Volvo Cars as a senior sound designer. I am responsible for designing all interactive sounds in our cars, both interior and exterior. The transition from manual driving to self-driving cars is a challenge also for us as sound designers, as for the whole industry. So that's why we started a research project Sonic Interaction and N Intelligent Cars, where we explore what our role is in the transformation. We didn't really foresee sound as an issue, rather as an opportunity or a tool in order to help out sorting out these challenges within the self-driving cars. And what we came up with is that we can use sound to enhance the feeling of trust in the car by showing the surrounding around the car and also help out to mitigate motion sickness by showing the car's upcoming maneuver by sound. We discovered quite early that we needed input from outside the automotive industry. So we got in contact with a Swedish research institute called RISE Interactive and also Pole Position Production, which is a Swedish sound design company within the gaming industry. And the whole reason for that was to kind of marry the automotive and the gaming together and finding synergies. So we showed in our work that sound could be a powerful tool to show the car's intention. And this is something that could be used both on the inside and also on the outside. We need to show any intention of an autonomous driven car. After all, these cars will not have a driver behind the steering wheel. So the small nods and waves that we do uh, to communicate with us in the traffic simply aren't there. As it moves alongside traffic, it's going to have all its sensors put on, of course. And in the case of a stray pedestrian, it's going to start emitting a directed sound to make sure that everybody is aware that the car is coming along. And if the pedestrian fails to interact, of course, the car will stop. But in this case, it's kind of a little nod just telling anyone that it's coming around. Indicators, very universal, of course. And this, by the way, can't be in dialects. The same sounds will need to be understood in Sweden and in Japan. We have used sounds to almost give the car a voice. We tried to identify different types of behaviors to satisfy with our sound design. And we ended up with three main behaviors. One being work while riding. Another behavior which is being a bit more cautious than maybe wants to be reassured. The third behavior wants to be more of entertained. So to give you an example, this is a acceleration for the working behavior. It sounds like this. And then if you decelerate, being the person who uh, wants to be a bit more entertained, it could sound like this. So the main difference between today's manual cars and the future self-driving cars is that we're not only targeting the driver anymore, we're targeting all the riders of the car. <laughs> 